Hello everyone, welcome to another world edit tutorial. In today's video, I'm just going to show you a few basic commands for how to change a biome of a selection or a certain area, and how to do some basic landscaping that are really better for smaller scale builds because it's not something you're going to need for a giant build. All of these commands are found in the standard world edit plugin, however, I will be throwing in a few commands from fast async world edit that relate to biomes. Let's get going. Let's start off from the very beginning. How do you change a biome? Well, very simply, first of all, we need to make a selection. So let's just do that. And then in order to change the biome in our selection, we're just going to do set biome. And then for the biome, we're actually just going to say like jungle, just like so. And it will change it to that biome color, as you can see. Now, if you're not sure what different biomes there are that you can set, or if you're just not sure how Minecraft wants you to type them, you can do biome list and it will give you a list of all the biomes in there. And handy enough with fast async world edit, you can just click on one of these and it will automatically do it for you. It's a nice hack that comes with fast async world edit. So let's go ahead and do set biome to beaches and boom, it just set up the biome for us. I can just go through here and pick whichever one I want with my selection already in place. By the way, this selection grid that I have is from the World Edit CUI plugin, which has only been updated up to 1.12, so it will not work in versions beyond that. But I am using 1.12 for this tutorial because it's so much easier for you to see what I'm actually doing. Let's go ahead and set this biome again to the jungle just so I can actually have a clear visible difference there. So that's how you set a biome with standard world edit. However, if you do have fast async world edit, you can also bind a biome to a brush, which I will show you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just create our regular sphere brush and to add a biome to it, we're just going to do a dollar sign and then the biome after that. So we'll say BR sphere jungle, and then you can see you can paint it. And just like any brush, you can change the size to whatever you want and it will change just like that. Now the cool thing about the brushes is you can actually mix biomes to get a really interesting combination of colors. You can get unique colors that you normally wouldn't be able to get. Let me look at my biome list just to see what kind of biomes I want to mix. What if we were to mix the ice flats with the taiga for example? So let me do BR sphere, oh actually I could do material I suppose. Material, ice, We'll do ice flats and then comma, we'll do taiga. And when I do that, it's going to do 50% of each one because I separated them with a comma. So you might not be able to tell, but you can kind of see some green mixed in there with the ice flats. Let me try that again, but this time instead of taiga or in addition to taiga, let's just do that. We'll do jungle. Oops, I forgot the dollar sign in front of that. So now we have three, so it should be split up three ways evenly. And you can see neat patterns it's making. It's actually mixing all three of those biomes and creating like a spotted like pattern. So this is really cool because you can achieve all kinds of interesting details in your terrain by doing this. So what if you wanted just a little tiny bit of blue, but you wanted a lot more of the jungle showing, we could just add some percentages to this as well. We could say 80% jungle and 20% ice flats. And let's go ahead and try that. And now you can see, indeed, we do have the majority of our brush is brushing jungle. I guess I should also mention you can use that dollar sign biome definer in any command. It doesn't have to necessarily be a brush. You could use it in a set command or a replace command. That's just how you identify a biome, just like you'd identify a block with an ID. Now I just want to go over a few extra landscaping commands that can become useful to you. This first one requires that we have a selection, so I'm going to select around all of this for demonstration. Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the command naturalize. Now, what this does is it will take terrain and naturalize it in the natural form of Minecraft, which is basically stone with a four layers of dirt, I believe, on top of it. And this command will only work on top of other stone or dirt. It will not work on top of any other block, which is why I have the diamonds here, just as an example. So if I have this selected and I were to naturalize all of this land, it's automatically going to place a layer of dirt and stone on all of it. Now granted, this was already stone, but if I was doing this on dirt, it would have added the stone. So over here, you can see it has added four layers of dirt and it's actually done that everywhere. 
but you can see it much better on that square part. And it's completely ignoring the diamond because it doesn't recognize that as any kind of terrain, so it's not even going to bother messing with it. If you're working with a lot of stone, that's a handy trick, but if you wanted to cover your terrain that was made out of a different block such as this, you could use the command overlay with grass and well that overlaid everything because I have everything selected but that's also another quick command if you wanted to just add a layer of grass on top although naturalize is just an interesting thing that you can add more than one layer of grass on top of it. Now I've made my selection a little bit smaller and we're going to demonstrate a couple extra commands. First of all if you wanted to generate some flowers on this grass you didn't want a bone meal at all because that would take forever you can just make a selection and just do the command flora and it will automatically add a bunch of grass and flowers for you. And this is just going to cover every inch inside your selection and you can do it multiple times if you want to make it thicker. And it's just going to go with the standard poppies and dandelions. I really don't know if it will do any other kinds of flowers. Um, every time I've tried it, it's only ever done these two, but I could be mistaken. I don't know if it works with different biomes. I haven't actually checked that out or tested it, but that is the floor command. In addition to generating our own flowers, we can generate our own forest by using the simple command forest plus the type of forest that we want. In this case, let's try spruce and then I'm going to choose the density. I'm just going to make it a very low density, we'll just say five. And we'll see how many spruce trees that that has produced. And it's going to look for a spot that they can actually go in, I suppose. Now, if we were to undo this and give it a higher density like 10, it's going to add a lot more trees in here. After doing some messing around with this command, I don't know all of the names of each of the individual trees. For example, I don't know how you would generate giant spruce trees. I don't know what that name is technically called. Maybe somebody will know it and they can point it out to me. But pretty much if you did type in something that wasn't a valid command, for example, if I said forest, and let's just put something stupid in there like purple, that's not a tree. But if we did that, it's just going to give us oak trees. So it will work regardless of if you put in the type of tree you wanted, but if you did want to specify the tree, you have to be very specific with it, otherwise it's just going to give you oak trees. Let me just put it that way. Just a few more commands to show you. I honestly don't think you'll ever need to use these, but since they are in World Edit, let's just go ahead and point out that they exist. So the first one is the command pumpkins. And the thing about all of these commands is you don't need a selection at all for it. So I'm just going to do pumpkins and then I'm going to choose a radius that I want my pumpkins to generate in. So I'm just going to choose a radius of five, which is very small, and it's going to produce zero pumpkins probably because it didn't have enough space. Let's try 50. And there we go. I needed to actually find a space to put the pumpkin. So as you can see, it has generated pumpkins in a 50 radius of where I was standing. This command does require grass to work. I have tested it on other blocks and it will only work if you're standing on grass. It's only going to generate on top of grass blocks. And it's probably the same for all of these, to be honest. The next command is if you want to generate snow the same way, you just do the command snow with a radius. So I just generate snow in a 10 block radius, just like that, boom. And likewise, if we wanted to melt the snow, we would just do thaw with a radius of however much we wanted to thaw. And last but not least, if we wanted to make something green, such as we had a lot of dirt that we wanted to turn green, you could just as easily paint it with go paint or something, or you could just do this world edit command green with a radius. I'm just going to choose a super high radius to make sure I cover it all and it's gonna make sure all those dirt blocks turn green. So there you have it, just a few landscaping and biome changing commands I hope will help you someday. I have personally never used most of these. I have used the biome one a couple times, but the landscaping ones I don't find myself using too often just because I don't tend to build at that scale, but there are some nice shortcuts for if you wanna get something done really quickly. And that's all I have for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to check out some other world edit tutorials, I do have a playlist somewhere floating around out there. Have fun building and I'll see you some other time.